Welcome back. In this video, I'll be looking at 2.2 conditional probability. 2.2 represents chapter 2, section 2 of the Pearson A level maths applied maths year 2 textbook. I'm going to start off this teaching video by going through the set notation for conditional events. Event A, given that the vertical line represents given that the event B has already occurred. Event A, given that the Event B has already occurred. The probability of A given B is equal to probability A intersect B divided by probability B, provided that probability B is not equal to zero. This is the conditional probability formula. Suppose Two events A and B are independent, then probability A given B is equal to probability A. So given that B has already occurred, the probability of A happening is not affected by B happening because A and B are independent events. We can actually prove this statement, so let's have a look at the proof. Let's start off from the left hand side, which is probability A given B. The formula for this is probability A intersect B divided by probability B. Now because the events A and B are independent, we know that probability A intersect B is the same as probability A multiplied by probability B divided by probability B. Now we can cancel the probability B and so we end up with probability A which is equal to the right hand side. End of proof. Okay now this particular statement can be generalized to any two events that are independent. For example let's suppose that the events not A and B are independent. Then, probability not A given B is equal to probability not A. So not A is not affected by B happening. Okay, so probability not A given B is equal to probability not A. Now we can actually prove this statement, so let's have a look at the proof. Left hand side, we have probability not A given B. So using the conditional probability formula, this is equivalent to probability not A intersect B divided by probability B. Because the events not A and B are independent, probability not A intersect B is the same as probability not A multiplied by probability B over probability B. So we can see that the probability B will cancel, leaving us with probability not A, which is precisely the right hand side. End of proof. Now whenever you answer conditional probability questions, it is very important that you restrict your sample size, so that there's the key. I'm going to explain this via some exam style questions. Here is an exam style question on two-way tables. 120 students are asked about their viewing habits. 56 say they watch sports represented by S and 77 say they watch dramas represented by T. Of those who watch dramas, 18 also watch sports. Part A, complete the two-way table. So we have a watch sport, does not watch sport, S, S dash, watch drama, does not watch drama, D, D dash, and we've got the total. Now, there are 120 students in total, so we can stick in the 120 over here. 56 say they watch sports, so watch sport, the total is 56. 77 say they watch dramas, so watch drama, the total is 77. 
of those who watch dramas so from the total 77 18 also watch sports so the 18 you stick it over here so now I just need to finish off my two-way table this part over here will be 77 take away 18 which is 59 this part over here will be 120 take away 56 which is 64 this part over here will be 120 take away 77 which is 43 this part over here will be 56 take away 18 which is 38 and finally this part over here will be 64 take away 59 which is 5 and that there is my two-way table completed let's have a look at part b one student is chosen at random find part one probability not d part two probability not s intersect not d part three probability s given d so that is a conditional probability we need to restrict the sample size and part four probability not d a given s again that there is conditional probability so we need to restrict the sample size let's start off with part one so probability not d is the probability does not watch dramas okay so we have 43 out of a possible 120 probability not s intersect not d that's the same as probability not s and not d in context probability does not watch sport and does not watch dramas okay so that there will be five students out of a possible 120 let's have a look at part three we have a conditional probability probability s given d so that is a probability watch sport given that watch drama so we need to restrict our sample size we go to watch a drama we have 77 in total out of the 77 how many students watch sport so from the 77 we have 18 that watch sport and there you have it okay let's move on to the last part probability not d given s so that is a probability does not a watch a drama given that watch sports so let's go to watch sports we have 56 so we need to restrict our sample size to 56 and out of the 56 how many students do not watch a drama from the 56 does not watch drama we have 38 so 38 out of 56 so for part three we had to reduce the sample size from 120 to 77 and for part 4 we had to reduce the sample size from 120 to 56 here is a random variable exam style question a red and a blue spinner each have four equally likely outcomes numbered 1 to 4 the two spinners are spun at the same time and the sum of the numbers shown x is recorded so x represents the sum of the numbers part a draw a sample space diagram part b find part one probability x equal five part two probability x equal three given that red spinner is two so for this one here we need to restrict the sample size and part three probability blue spinner is three given that the sum x is equal to five again for this one here we need to restrict the sample size let's have a look at part a the sample space diagram so we have the red spinner one two three four then the blue spinner one two three four we need to take the sum and the sum of each of these outcomes represents x so firstly we have one plus one which is two one plus two which is three one plus three is four 1 plus 4 is 5 and so on and there you have it that there is my sample space diagram part b find part 1 probability x equal 5 
So the probability of the sum being 5. We have 1, 2, 3, 4 out of a possible 4, 8, 12, 16. Let's move on to part 2. Probability x equal 3, and given that, the red spinner is 2. So the red spinner is 2. For that, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 possible outcomes. So our sample size and now reduces from 16 to 4. And from those four possible outcomes, we want the probability that sum is 3. So that is 1 out of the possible 4. Let's move on to part 3. Probability blue spinner is 3, given that the sum is 5. So given that the sum is 5, okay, so we need to reduce the sample size from 16 to something else. And that something else will technically be 1, 2, 3, 4. So from 16, the sample size reduces to 4. So out of the possible 4 outcomes, what is the probability that the blue spinner is 3? So blue spinner is 3. That will be this particular outcome. All right, sum is 5. And that sum is 5 comes from the red spinner being 2 and the blue spinner being 3. So 1 out of a possible 4. And that there, ladies and gents, completes the random variable exam style question. Now you must be thinking, why haven't we applied the conditional probability formula for these type of questions? Well, the answer is, for these type of questions, it is much more easier to use the method of restricting the sample size. However, later on in the chapter, there will be much more difficult questions where it is better to use the conditional probability formula. Like always, if you found this video useful, please don't forget to subscribe.